Well, if you've been wondering, when are we going to hear from Cow Country again? When are we going to hear from The Wizard and Susie? You now got your answer. And we are heading away from one of the places that we purchased down here in the Middlesboro area, entering the downtown area of Middlesboro. Uh, Middlesboro, again, is right around 10,000 people, probably counting dogs and cats. And now we're going to be uh, eventually going through a really cool tunnel, I believe, uh, and crossing onto the Tennessee, Virginia side. It's only a matter of minutes from where we are, so you can kind of travel along with us. And uh, I'm going to be handing the camera to Susie shortly, and, uh, and then eventually we'll be going up a very steep mountainside to a place called the Pinnacle Overlook or Outlook or something like that. Here's our center area of the town right here with the four fountains. You may have been able to catch a glimpse of them, one on each corner. I've never been in a town that has four fountains. And now up ahead here, you're going to see uh, a crossover above the road. It says the Magic City. What a more appropriate place. One of the first visits Susie and I did, we saw that. There it is right there, the Magic City. And we thought, oh yeah, this is a place for the wizard to land. So that's, that's what we've done. All right, I better start moving over. And you can see some of the mountain range right there in front of us. Again, Middlesboro is circled 360 degrees by mountains. There's no break at all, which makes it a little bit challenging sometimes with uh, cell service and and other things like that. You don't get many radio stations here. I think, what is it, Susie, two radio stations? Yes. Two radio stations. So mountains are beautiful, but they can also get in the way. So I'm going to hand the camera to Susie. You can look right through the, uh, the screen right there, Susie, and you'll be able to see where you're pointing. Shortly, we'll be going through the Cumberland Gap Tunnel. Before this tunnel was built, uh, all of the locals had to drive up and over the mountain range. In 1,000 feet, turn right onto South 12th Street, US 25, East South. They had to drive over the mountain range, and uh, it was incredibly treacherous, especially in uh, colder, colder times. It does get cool At the here. Right, turn right onto South 12th Street, US 25 East South, then take the US 25 East South exit. It does get cold here, and, and they do get ice on the road sometimes. So you can imagine driving over uh, a couple of mountain ranges to get to going where you want to go. Now we have the luxury of going through a tunnel, which makes it much, much easier. But you can imagine what it took to build that tunnel to get through that mountain range. All right. So this is part of the Cumberland Gap right off to the right there. It says National Historical uh, Park. Take the US 25 East South exit, then turn right onto Pinnacle View Road. Oh, actually, we will not be going through the tunnel on this trip. <laughs> we'll be cutting over sooner. I forgot that. We're getting over onto uh, turn U right onto Pinnacle View Road. US turn left 25. To stay on View Road. Google really wants to make sure I make all the right turns here. Now, right there in front of us, I don't know if Susie's able to capture it, but you've got mountain range after mountain range after mountain range. And that's all around the town of uh, Middlesbrough. the next left to stay on Pinnacle View Road. So we're heading towards the Pinnacle Overlook. Susie, I, for four miles. Susie and I have done this once before and it is quite a fun drive. Some real sharp turns we'll be making. And this is the area of uh, Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone and uh, his group would have been involved in clearing a lot of this 
Cumberland Gap area way back in the day to get its beginnings. Really kind of a lovely travel here through the wooded areas. And we'll be going up to about a third of the way up the mountain. Um, not all the way to the top. The, the overlook doesn't go up there. And when we get to the overlook, we'll be looking right down on uh, Middlesboro. And we'll be right around 800 feet. If we go all the way to the top, it would be close to 3,000 feet. But we will not be traveling that far. for a bit and let you enjoy the beauty of this land. And I think there's an overlook up here on the left, isn't there, Susie? Yes. We stopped at it. We'll have to let me know if I'll catch it in time. These curves come up so quick. engine kind of uh, growling a little bit as we're going up a relatively steep grade here. As Susie and I traveled out to this area, we were both uh, towing U-Haul trailers. And uh, as you were going up and over some of the mountain ranges, both of our vehicles were yeah, they did really well, but they were kind of complaining a little bit, saying, hey, you try pulling this thing. And you can see the sign, Sugar Run, no idea what that is. And then the Pinnacle Overlook is just ahead here. Yep, we're going up. Now, as all of you know, I'm a former Wisconsin guy, and Susie's a former uh, Minnesota gal. But we take these hills and these curves just like the locals. Matter of fact, a couple times we've had folks kind of following us before we got our new license plates. And you could tell they were kind of pressing on us to see how much they could push us. And we left them in the dirt. So Wisconsin and Minnesota folks, they can adapt very quickly to... Oh, there goes a bicyclist. It's getting some good speed. Another one. Getting some real good speed coming down that hill. Hopefully they have good brakes. Now the curves we've done so far have been very minor very very minor we got a couple coming up that are hairpin turns it looks like we're about 1.8 miles away from here's a pretty sharp one here all right Susie's leaning to the left you can't see her <laughs> and now she's leaning to the right a warning that people are crazy enough to walk out here, but apparently they do. And the last time Susie and I came up here, actually the only time that we've come up here, we were going through one of these curves and I started slowing down and it's because there was a deer right in the road. And that little deer 
And here's one of our curves right here. I'm going to stop for a second. I don't know where Susie's pointing exactly, but I'm going to see if I can get over safely onto that shoulder. Hang on, y'all. Susie can hopefully get a shot, or I can take the camera and get the shot from this side. I'm just going to step onto the vehicle real quick here. And this is only a fraction of the way up towards the Pinnacle Overlook, and you can see mountain range after mountain range after mountain range. There's Middlesboro right down there off in the distance. And again, the mountain ranges totally encircle the city of Middlesboro, which is about 10,000 people. And just to show you that we are officially Kentuckians now. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, we got to keep going up. And there's Susie. <laughs> All right, Susie, you're doing great. I'm going to hand you back the camera and we're going to keep up the mountain here. Checking over my right shoulder. You can actually point the, sh point the camera over your shoulder for a second down the road, Susie, so they can see that curve that we just came through. Now we're going to continue up the, up the mountain here. You definitely want to take care of your vehicles in this area. You can imagine getting stranded on a on a mountain hillside like this, especially if the weather was yucky. More curves. And this sign says uh, Fort McCook Civil War Earthwork. A lot of history in this area. All the way back to Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone was a man. Any of you know that song? More curves. Susie's doing a great job, isn't she? She's strapped in especially tight right now. <laughs> Saying, okay, I trust you, Scott. This <laughs> and you can't see it, but off to the left, as Susie points the camera towards me, is a drop-off that's probably four or five hundred feet straight down. Here we go through another curve. Beautiful trees, too. Susie's probably pointing out towards the front there. You can see just all the trees. Some of them are kind of leaning towards the road and you're like, yeah, I hope they're better rooted than they look. And we're about a mile away from the Pinnacle Overlook right now. That's a tight turn right there. And we're probably at about 500 feet right now, 600 feet, something like that. And you notice there's no guardrails, just trees. No guardrails whatsoever. Curious about the uh, weather, we've been having a real, real rainy spell. Here's a tight turn. Inches and inches and inches of rain coming down. And all the locals say it'll last for about another two or three weeks until we get into uh, August and then regular weather will resume again without all the heavy rains but the temperatures have been certain days they've been up in the uh, upper 90s 
Today it's a little cooler. It's 83 degrees outside right now. And at night it does cool down, which is a blessing. How do those curves look through the camera, Susie? Looks like we're going over the edge. <laughs> Quite a few of those moments here. Are you able to see the road in front of us through the camera? Yes. Okay. And we got a fighting chance. Here's another curve. I'm trying to stay with the windshield so they can get the same view that we're getting. Yeah. These are definitely tight turns. Another one. There goes the road right off the picture again. We're about two tenths of a mile away from uh, the pinnacle. In 1,000 feet, you will arrive at your destination. The pinnacle overlook, 1,000 feet. And any of you that follow us on Facebook saw that I posted a reel uh, about this. And this is the Pinnacle parking lot area. Again, we're not even to the top of the mountain. But we're probably at about almost 800 feet in that area. And we'll hop out of the car and walk the same path that Susie and I did the last time we were here. And you'll get a chance to see. You have arrived. We've arrived. <laughs> you'll be able to finally see why we drove all this way. And actually, it's not very far. It's from where we are right now with the house that we bought. We're probably only about 14, 14 miles. Less than that, I think. And right now, as we're sitting here, we started in Kentucky, but we're actually right now in Virginia. You see our, our tracking there. We're in a place called Ewing, Virginia. Yeah, I'll give you a smiley face. You got us here. And I actually downloaded an app the last time we were up here uh, that did uh, the altimeter or whatever it's called so you can tell what the altitude is the sign here says 600 feet but the altimeter actually said that we we're almost at 800 feet so we'll hop out and walk down the path and you'll be able to say that you visited the pinnacle overlook which is kind of between Kentucky and Virginia there you go If you hear like a clicking sound, it's because I have Tic Tacs in my pocket. Anybody wants a Tic Tac, just let me know and I'll mail you one. Fort McCook Trail, all kinds of things to visit here. If you like trails, there's lots and lots of walking trails here.
you can see right here, Fern Lake. That's the lake that supplies the water for Middlesboro. And you can see the Tri-State Peak. We have Tennessee, we've got Virginia, and we have Kentucky all converging on one point, depending on where you're standing. This is a little path that goes up this way. This is where you can step from one boundary to the other. I believe it's Kentucky and Virginia. And that's what the girls are doing right now. They're standing in two separate states by just changing positions. You can just pop up there real quick. Virginia and Kentucky. Tennessee is kind of left out, aren't they? And the humidity has been real high here, which uh, as you move higher up in elevation, it can kind of make it difficult to, to breathe, even for somebody that doesn't have breathing issues. But We're almost at the lookout point. This would have been the same lookout point that I showed in that reel on Facebook. There's a big, big boulder up there. You're hoping that it doesn't somehow pivot the other way, huh? Yikes. What do you think, Susie? I think we're high. But we can stay in a different state. Breathtaking views. in the picture, eh? And I'm sure that there are people that climb down on those rocks. They're probably not supposed to, but you don't want to miss step, that's for sure. And also we're in snake country here too, so whenever you get around rocks like this, you gotta be mindful that there could be snakes in those rocks too, so. We're in Tennessee.
We're in the clouds. Yeah, we literally are in the clouds today. So I don't know if you could hear those young men talking, but they were explaining to their grandfather that we're looking at three states right now from this point. Where the camera's pointing right now, we're looking towards, um, I think they said, yeah, Tennessee, and then Virginia, in the middle, and then Kentucky, off to the side. Oh, Susie was showing it. So Harrogate, Harrogate is Tennessee, where Lincoln, U, Lincoln Memorial University is. This must be Virginia right in the middle, and then Kentucky all the way to the right. This is a map that's representative. Then Tennessee is to the left, Virginia's in the middle, and then Kentucky's to the right. Huh? Mm -hmm. Virginia runs right down the middle of the two. That's the tunnel. Mm -hmm. We should see if we have time to go through the tunnel. That would be a hoot. Mm -hmm. Should we head back down? Yes. Well, I hope you enjoyed that overlook. It's a rare opportunity to be able to stand at a point and look at such a historic area covering three states, all the way to the left, Tennessee, Virginia running down the middle, and then Kentucky to the right. And I'm glad that Susie pointed out that map because I think I had them reversed. <laughs> So if, if you've never had a chance to travel to this part of the country before, it is well worth it. Well worth it. From the Twin Cities, it's about 14 hours. And from Wisconsin, it's probably closer to 12. It's a little bit closer. Right up there is where we were stepping between Virginia and uh, Kentucky. And Susie and I are going to try to head back down to the car and see if we can take you through the Cumberland Gap Tunnel. That was a crazy amazing project that they took on so that folks would be able to um, drive through the mountain instead of over it. I don't know if you can see that in the shot because of the clouds but way back there there's another mountain range. Just looks like those trees grew just in the perfect way to frame that landscape, doesn't it? Amazing.
Well, we're going to see if we can hop in the car. Susie's going to take over the camera again. And uh, see if we can take you over by the tunnel. If we have enough time, otherwise we'll do it another time. Buckle in and then I'll hand you the camera. All right, we'll do our best to head towards that tunnel. Going down the mountain now. <laughs> More of those shut the front door moments. Yeah, get yourself comfortable because your, your arms are going to get tired of holding that up. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go here. There's another, so, so Pinnacle Overlook, 2,440 feet. You can go up a different way and you're going to be even higher up, so. Well, let's see, I think we're doing this right. And again, if Susie's got the camera pointing so you can see the edge of the road, it's a total drop off. We're at about seven or 800 feet right now and if you make a missed turn if you're not paying attention there's no guardrail to to hold you in place here and now as i'm driving down this mountain i can't ride ride my brakes all the way right so if you decide to take this trip and you've got a gear shifter you got to drop it down to slow yourself down a little bit otherwise you'll burn your brakes out seen a deer on this trip yet but we've been having deer coming through the yard at the house that Susie and I bought the road is literally disappearing from view around all these corners yeah kind of angle it to the left a little bit and you'll be able to follow the curve with the car Just, if you would, just hand me the camera just for a second. Come down to a slowing point. I'm going to do it right over the steering wheel just for a short distance. another tight turn and then I'm going to hand the camera back to Susie again.
<laughs> you doggy. Downshift one more time. That might be a little bit too much. And those of you that are not outdoorsy people but would love to visit a place like this. You know, realize that there's a lot of, well, obviously snakes and spiders and and also plants as well. Even behind the house that Susie and I got, we found uh, poison ivy. We didn't know it was poison ivy until Susie used her uh, her master gardener app and was able to identify it. It looked just like any other viney type plant. drive that we're taking up and down this uh, mountain at the Pinnacle Overlook, um, it gives you an idea of what it was like before they built that tunnel so that people could uh, drive through the tunnel instead of over it. That's the same overlook we had uh, coming up the mountain and we're probably only about 600 feet here. But the only thing protecting us right now are those silly little rocks that they put down on the edge. Susie's so probably getting a shot of them through the camera. That's not much to stop a heavy car if somebody misses that turn and they're not paying attention. I'm not sure how many they've had go over the cliff here. But you got to keep your, keep your head on straight and drive careful through these parts. See right here, especially if Susie kind of leans out just a little bit with the camera. That's straight down, folks, straight down. And there is a road at the bottom, but that's probably a good 200 feet down. Here comes a tight turn. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think my belly, I think my belly button is in my left shoe right about now.
Now I, I shifted back to drive again. Look at how fast the car is picking up speed. That's why if you've never driven in mountains before, you gotta really use your gear shifter carefully so that you can control your speed coming down hills. Otherwise you'll burn your brakes out and then you won't be able to stop. that pretty little spot ahead where we're going through a wooded area. Almost at the bottom, we're getting real close. puppy out here. So one thing that Susie and I have noticed since we've come to Kentucky is that um, people interact with their dogs differently here than back in the Midwest, Wisconsin, Minnesota. They tend to be uh, a little bit less hands-on with their animals. Um, I'll just leave it at that. It's a little bit troubling, some of the things that we've seen, but. All right, this is the main entrance we came in, so I'm gonna do my best to get us going towards that tunnel before our time runs out on the camera. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. We'll head, head towards Tennessee south, I think, right, Susie? 25, east, sorry, yes. 25 east. I believe this is going to get us through the tunnel. We're still learning here. We've only been here a couple weeks, so we're definitely not experts. So right now we're kind of driving through that area on the road that we were looking down on from the overlook point. And um, I mean, you can only imagine Susie kind of pans up a little bit. Uh, one of those overlooks, probably to the right, I think, is where we were standing just moments ago. And uh, now we're going to be traveling through a tunnel that's about a half mile long, and it takes us from Kentucky into Tennessee. 
and then with a quick little deviation on a road you can be in Virginia that tri-state area of here is I just think it's fascinating and you can see if Susie kind of points at that truck over there to the right they're getting ready to shut this tunnel down as soon as one of these trucks comes to this area and it's a hazardous type vehicle it has to stop there and wait for an escort and then they shut the tunnel down and they take only that truck through this tunnel that we're entering right now and right now we're literally driving through a mountain from one end to the other it probably takes us what do you think Susie a couple minutes at least and it's only uh, you have to stay in one lane you can't jump around between lanes and um, we're doing probably about 40 miles an hour you can see how long it's going to take us to get there before we see daylight again Again, before this tunnel was built, the only choice you had was to take a road like we just took up to the Pinnacle Overlook and a road down from the Pinnacle Overlook, winding, tight turns, no guardrails. Uh, that's what Tennessee folks and Kentuckians had to do before this tunnel was built. And if anybody in the uh, live chat wants to do some quick research, uh, the Cumberland Gap Tunnel. When was it built? How long did it take? Etc. 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 Go and type that in the live chat. Now we're finally reaching the end. And now we are, I think, well, up by this sign. Up by this sign, I think we'll be officially in uh, Tennessee. We'll see that sign shortly. And if we were to turn to the right on 58 East, where that exit sign is, 30 miles an hour, we'd be heading right into Virginia. And there's welcome to Tennessee right there. So in a matter of minutes, Susie and I can jump in the car after a busy week and say, hey, why don't we go to dinner in Virginia? Why don't we go to dinner over in Tennessee, which we've done many times, and it just takes a matter of moments. But the real cool thing about this Tennessee side is there's a famous uh, university that's tied to one of our uh, one of our uh, former presidents, Abraham Lincoln, and it's in uh, what is that Hennepin County, Susie? Oh uh, no, Claiborne. Har Harrogate, Claiborne, I think. Claiborne County, uh, but you'll see it coming up here on the right shortly, uh, and a lot of folks travel from around the country around the world to go to this university yeah Claiborne County Susie's right Claiborne County and up here on the right you'll see this really cool university they've got some stones out on the lawn and stuff and also a little bit further up on the right side there's some of the campus right there um, Susie had seen them up on the hill, I believe. Somewhere up on the hill, there's some old log cabins that almost resemble, I don't, I don't think they're original, but they would have been like the one that Abraham Lincoln, the one that Abraham Lincoln stayed in, excuse me. Right here on the right are those little log cabins up on the uh, hill there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your trip up a mountain, down a mountain, through a tunnel, and now we're going to be returning through that tunnel to get back into Kentucky. And uh, Susie and I are doing well. We're getting settled uh, each and every day a little bit more and uh, getting acquainted with more folks, making new friends. And uh, we wanted to shoot some videos so that you could finally feel connected with us again and uh, get a little update on where we're at and what we're doing. Like 
I said, we got mountains everywhere here. Every, everywhere. Goodness. I don't know if Susie's probably not going to be able to get it, but on the front of that building right over there is the image of Abraham Lincoln. Right out that window. I'm still in the process right now of setting up uh, the temporary workshop uh, in a small little garage behind the property that Susie and I bought. Uh, so in a couple weeks or so, I had to get a, a Wi-Fi booster because this garage is built on a cement blocks and it was blocking the signal. But um, we'll be doing a live stream hopefully with some sewing machines. Until then, you've gotten a glimpse of where we where we are at now. So with that, I'll be quiet and just let you enjoy the ride. I'm sure what you're seeing through the cameras is spectacular, but when you visit here in person, as Susie and I did for the first time a number of months ago, it, you just find like almost like you're out of breath because it's it's just so spectacularly beautiful, beautiful, just absolutely overwhelming the beauty of this area. And here comes that tunnel again. If you kind of pan up a little bit, Susie, you can look at that mountain that we're going to be literally driving through. Imagine how many, uh, how many men, women, dedicated workers it took to cut through a mountain like this. And in a matter of minutes, we've passed from Tennessee back over to Kentucky again. miles an hour. Look at how long it's taking us to get through. How much earth, how much earth had to be moved to make this a, a reality. Just unbelievable, isn't it? town of Middlesboro is kind of the hub of this area. Only 10,000 people, but that population f flexes way up and down all the time because you've got two other states other than Kentucky that are coming to Middlesboro to go to Walmart, Cracker Barrel, and a number of the other stores that are located in Middlesboro that serve as kind of a tri-state magnet uh, for this area. So... Our, uh, our little town is a, is a booming place, even though it still feels like a small town. So, And now we're coming up at the main corner. We're going to be turning left, going back the way we came originally. 
and uh, y'all take care and God bless you, okay? And uh, thanks as always uh, to the moderating team for taking such good care of the family and uh, for all of you that joined us on this today, both during the live stream premiere and also uh, afterwards uh, as a video. show Susie which button to push because I never showed her which button to push to shut it off but first of all I'll say see ya all right. take care everybody God bless